Hello and welcome to Formula Phil. Back to the old format of F1's Forgotten Heroes today with one of my personal favourites, Jochen Rindt. Now where to start with Jochen Rindt? Sadly, uh, as most of you probably would know, that Jochen is the only posthumous World Drivers champion. He gathered enough points over the season that even after his death he couldn't be matched. And heartbreakingly, it was his wife or his widow that actually collected his World Championship Drivers trophy. But before all that, what about the man? Well, Jochen Rindt was actually born in Germany, but throughout his racing career, he represented Austria as he was raised by his Austrian grandparents. And I guess he spent all of his life there. So, uh, yeah, he was an Austrian man. Rindt was Senna before Senna. Uh, he was the Senna of the 70s anyway. That almost always sideways style. He was one of the first to pioneer kind of steering it in with the rear. And this excited fans that he was extremely well liked across the paddock as well. But fans particularly loved Rint's style because it was exciting to watch. With Jackie Stewart following him, often thinking, Jesus, you've gone in too fast, Jochen, you're not going to make it. And yet somehow he'd make it around the corner. At the start of his career, he drove for Cooper and Brabham. But it wasn't until he joined Lotus that he really received full success. Though he was extremely critical of Lotus cars often citing them as dangerous and unreliable. He had some major accidents, and most of which could be accounted to not his driving style, but actually car failure. It was in fact the 1969 Spanish Grand Prix that both Rint and teammate Graham Hill suffered huge accidents due to aerofoil failure or rear wing failure. Rint was furious, and he placed the blame directly at Colin Chapman, the fabled Lotus team owner. And when he was asked had he had lost any trust in Lotus after the accident, he responded curtly with, I never had any trust in Lotus. Which is pretty funny, really, if you think about it, but also quite sad, because it was a Lotus that killed him. Rint was quite the talent even in sports cars, and in fact he won the 24 Hours Le Mans in 1965. The legend goes that Rint and fellow teammate Maston Gregory had very little interest in the race, so they hatched a plan, drive the wheels off the car, so they could go home early and just collect their paycheck. Fellow competitor Jackie Ix recalled that the two were driving like maniacs, but somehow, the Ferrari 250 held on, and they ended up winning quite an unexpected victory. But it wasn't until 1970 that everything started to go right for him in Formula 1. Winning back-to-back -back races and dominating the opposition. But tragically, it was the practice in Monza that he was killed at. To reach the high top speeds that was required at Monza, he removed the rear wings, causing the Lotus to be quite unstable at high speed. But it was, in fact, a failure of the right front brake shaft that caused him to lose control and slam into the barriers at around 170 mile an hour. Jochen was in the habit of only using four points on the five point harness then available and did not wear any of the crotch straps as he wanted to be able to exit the car quickly in event of a fire, a habit he developed after that terrible accident in Spain. And because he wasn't wearing the, that lower strap, he submarined through the car gliding under the belts and suffering fatal throat injuries. Rint was pronounced dead on the way to hospital and Lotus withdrew both cars from the race. Such was the horror of this accident that Colin Chaplin was put on trial and he wasn't cleared of charges to the following year in 1976. Rint's death sent shockwaves across all the racing community and in fact across the whole world because Rint was known as an extremely talented driver and in fact my own father has told me that he was out with all his mates at a fun fair when the news came to them that Jochen Rint had been killed and all the boys went home, they were devastated. Such was the impact of his death. Rint was loved globally and though he competed in 62 Grand Prix, he won 6 and he achieved 13 podium finishes. Those results don't really show the true impression that Jochen Rint left upon Formula 1 fans at the time and beyond, I guess. And for me personally, I read a book called Jochen Rint, Uncrowned King by David Tremaine that started this kind of thought that I should be making these videos to tell these men's stories. Uh, big shout out to my brother for actually buying me that book. It's a terrific read, so I thoroughly recommend it and uh, probably tell you more in detail about his life and about the man himself. But that's really all I'm going to do today on him, just a touch on the, the greatness that was Jochen Rint, if you didn't know who he was. I mean, hopefully you know a small bit more about him now. 
I want to say thank you for watching uh, and thank you to the new subscribers. I've seen a couple of you come up. If you're new in the last couple of weeks, thank you. Welcome. Uh, you'll have more of this kind of crack. And to my old ones and to anyone that's watching this, please like and subscribe. It does help the channel. And in the coming weeks, there'll be more F1's Forgotten Heroes and, of course, some more contemporary F1. Hope you're enjoying the series and all the videos. And as I said, if you are, please like and subscribe. And if you're not, go! Yeah, I'd say he's often.